This is the Truth Network. Hidden treasures of the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. So today we get to see the delightful, and that would be an understatement, (laughs) we get to delight in the delightful verse, which is the sixth verse of the sixth chapter, which that would be the Vav verse. And so you got two Vavs there, and the concept of the letter Vav, the more that I have studied it, since a lot of people tell you it's Jacob's ladder, or it's a male energy, or Christ's energy coming down so that we can reflect it, so to speak. But it is a continual thing, and it continues to be delightful. In other words, we delight in Jesus as he come up and down Jacob's ladder, and we continue to delight. And I'm sure you're going to see that as we're going to be talking about teeth today in so many different ways. As we get a chance to chew spiritually on the Word of God, we delight and we continue to delight. And as actually, as you get to chew your food, you delight and you continue to delight, especially if you chew the cud, <laughs> like a good sheep, however that works. So as we read this vav verse or the sixth verse in the sixth chapter, of, of which is, again, a continuation of what's been going on in chapter five, as now we are getting further into Jesus's description of his bride at this point. And there's been some progression, as we talked about in the previous verse. And there certainly is some progression in this verse. And not in what's said, but what isn't said. And I find it more than fascinating. It took me a lot of study to figure (laughs) what I believe it says. And I get to share that with you. How fun. So the way that the sixth verse reads in English is, Thy teeth are as a flock of sheep, which go up from the washing, whereof every one beareth twins, and there is not one barren among them. And so with this idea of teeth... I really dug in, (laughs) so to speak. I took a bite out of this verse. There's no doubt about that. So, you know, I began to process spiritual teeth or teeth in general. And so I just started to think about teeth. And, you know, it just turns out you have 32 of them, okay? And you have these four, you know, incisors, which are your very front teeth, which you use to bite the food or take a bite out of things. And I don't know if you have ever thought about it, but you bite into a verse. In other words, you're going to take out, you know, that verse out of the Bible and you to begin to consume it. So you take a bite and and then you have, right, the, the canine teeth that, that actually, interestingly, not only are there to kind of pierce the, the food, but it all they also align your jaw so that it, it can chew properly. I did not know that. And of course, teeth also have something to do with the way we pronounce our words, and, and delight in so many different ways. So you just think about your canine teeth that are there to pierce the food and whatever. Then you have premolars, and apparently you have eight of those if you're not like me and don't haven't lost some teeth. <laughs> and those premolars, they're called bicuspids because they have, you know, the, the four kind of prongs to help chew up the, the food. But they kind of pre-chew it for the molars, which you have 12 molars, And those 12 molars really are where the work gets done. Well, the progression of teeth really has a lot to do with what this verse is about. So as you get older, you get more teeth. In other words, you cut more teeth. In fact, the way humans are, we get a set of of children's teeth. And then as we get older, we get another set of teeth. And I don't know if you've ever thought about this spiritually, (laughs) (laughs) but you know, the older you get, the more, or the more older you are in Christ, from my perspective, the more you begin to chew the word and, and get more out of it because you get to use those molars that you grow. Okay. And and so the, the, one of the beauties of this particular verse is what he did not say, because if you go back and you look at the fourth chapter, In the second verse, we have the same exact description with one big, huge, gigantic difference. And in that one, it says, Thy teeth are as a flock of sheep well shorn, which come up from the washing. Well, that well shorn means, you know, obviously the idea of sheep that have been then trimmed. But in this case, what I thought about, you know, it's like, why are these teeth, you know, perfectly cut, so to speak? And the idea of this bride in, in, the, in the fourth chapter is just cut her teeth, okay? But here, since we, we're a little further on in the relationship, you know, where teeth are no longer 
freshly cut, right? And so as a child just cuts teeth, he's got to learn how to use them. And I did not know this, but as I studied this whole thing, you know, your tongue automatically moves food back in your mouth so that you can continue to brush it and get more nourishment out of it. And so your back molars have a great deal more of those cuspids, I guess, because they're not bicuspids. <laughs> but anyway, they have a lot more of those little prongs that, that, that grind up the meat, okay, or grind up the bread as the case may be. And so as we eat, no doubt, um, this is hugely connected to so many different concepts biblically, okay? It's just because the whole idea of eating is, is very much a, a bet and a raish expressed, okay? And a bet and a raish is the son, okay? It's bar. You, you've heard that, you know, bar Jonas and all this is the son of, well, a bet and a raish has got a lot to do with eating, which I find more than fascinating, that we eat the son in order to be cleansed. And that same um, bet raish also means to cleanse. <laughs> so, you know, the way that these feet, these teeth, you know, come up from the washing is they spend time in the word of God, Okay. And, 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 and no doubt that each has its twin and none are barren. In other words, these teeth are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Because as, as you have your incisors biting into the word of God and taking out a hunk, and then you have, you know, uh, your, your, your canine teeth that are, you know, piercing it and, and beginning to break it down. And, and then your premolars are beginning to to break it down, but the more you break it down, it's just like, as a matter of fact, as I did this very passage, I mean, the practical application of this is, wow, I mean, I had studied the, the previous verse a, a lot, but I didn't chew on it near as much <laughs> as I chewed on it over the weekend. I just did. I chewed on it all day Sunday, and I chewed on it this morning some more, and I kept chewing and chewing and chewing, and I'm sure the, you know, the beautiful deal as we continue to chew on this passage is we'll get more and more and more. But here he is really, if you think about it, he's giving her a, a stage up in her beauty by not saying that her teeth are freshly cut, that she's begun to use these teeth now, and she's begun to get some of the, the, the word of God out there. And so, you know, that a whole idea of wisdom teeth, if you thought about that, like, oh, yeah, well, as you get older, in those teeth are now allow you to, to chew your food more, okay? <laughs> so there's another practical application to this. is like one of the ways that you delight is by not just swallowing your food, okay? The way you delight is to chew that food and to taste and enjoy that the Lord is good, right? And so the more you chew with those wonderful molars that he gave you, <laughs> the more you can delight in all these different things. And so... I know I'm, to some extent, preaching to the choir because those people who listen to this, I'm sure, love the Word of God as much or more than I do. And so I know you're delighting in this like I'm delighting in it. And maybe you've processed your spiritual teeth more before. I, I never really have thought, Adam, at this extent. But one other little beautiful note, okay, that I think is amazing. I think it's spectacular, actually. And for those who can see it, if you just think, Robbie, that's out there, well, it's out there. But if not, if you can see what I'm talking about, just take a look at this, okay? You have 32 teeth. In fact, I sat there and counted them in my mouth. I have two that are missing. But those, if they were there where they were supposed to be in my, my wisdom teeth that were taken out, if I still had those, I would have 32 teeth, okay? There were 32 generations in the Bible between, obviously, Adam and Jesse, Okay, and, and somebody pointed out to me, I, I forget who, just recently I was listening to or interviewing or something, that the name Jesse is used way more often in, <laughs> in the story of Goliath than is the name David, right? Because he was the son of Jesse. And, and in other words, this was in the fullness of time. Adam, you know, had gone through many different generations in order to get to the point where we had someone that would be the beloved of God and that would be in a process that, that you know, if there was somebody that chewed on the word of God, it's clearly, <laughs> I mean, just clearly, if there was somebody that delighted in the word of God, you could see it from the first Psalm, the 119th Psalm, just take your pick, okay? I mean, the man loved the word of God and he chewed on it constantly, 
Okay, and, and so here, you know, how unbelievable is it that if from the the thirty two generations, you know, we get this person that would chew on the word of God like David did, and I think that's that's something, you know, for me. Like, I'm not going to forget that I have 32 teeth, and I'm not going to forget how we, we chew on the Word of God, and the more that we can use those molars, oh my goodness, the nourishment and, and the way that that builds our faith as we see how unbelievable, like, like we delight in your Word. <laughs> thank you, Lord, and, and thank you for listening and enjoying this with me. It's so much fun to share it.